hello my soccer universe back in the small car and driving home from work uh, it's Wednesday evening now I will probably uh, post this video uh, Thursday morning but let's see how it will go it basically will be talking about what games should we watch out for during the international break um, well, there undoubtedly are many, many games, and I think your nationality, your preferences might largely dominate what you're gonna watch. Uh, at least it will somewhat for me. I have not heard yet. I'm sorry, the sun is now again on the back here. I have not heard yet whether there will be a sort of goal zones or whether I switch around games, which I think will be preferred by me. For international games, I honestly have to tell you that I feel it's better to watch them switching around because sometimes the quality is not as great, although there is at least one game that I probably will forego a potential goal zone, but we'll talk about that uh, in a few. Um, I think there are only two continents that you really have to look at. That's of course the start of the European qualifiers for Euro 2020 next year. And secondly, the last round of Africa Cup qualifiers. So there are still a few spots available uh, and quite some dicey matches. And like uh, the Euros and now 24 teams, so the field is a lot more open. But we also have already some surprise qualifiers like Madagascar. Uh, which is gonna be fun because the Madagascar national team there's a player with some really 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 long names so just want to adjust the camera so I will uh, look at those two sets of qualifiers um, I probably won't see anything of the African but I will try at the end maybe to get a little bit uh, at the very end look at the results so let's go through it day by day it starts as I said on Thursday the 21st of March which is for me now tomorrow but when you uh, will watch this probably when this posts it will be today uh, and it kicks off with a monster clash between Kazakhstan and San Marino <laughs> that's the only small uh, game that I've listed because it's the first one um, at 8.45 there are two really interesting games. The one is Belgium-Russia, uh, which we had, I think, the last time at the World Cup in 2014. But you know, those are two uh, teams that finished in the top eight at the World Cup. Um, so definitely interesting and both are now, or will play the next Nations League in Nah, Russia didn't qualify, but hey, uh, Sweden took that spot, sorry about that, but yeah, no, uh, two good teams, uh, that's at 8.45 and I'm all in all talking Central European time, and the other game um, is Austria-Poland, which of course is near and dear to me, being from Austria, although the closer the game gets, the more pessimistic I get, and this is a typical thing for Austrians, we, um, Honestly, if the team wins, we're all for it. When the team loses, we are more or less laughing at them. And that's how it feels a little bit like that. It's, we have a really tough opening schedule. Uh, and that is almost a make or break game in a way. You want to get a point out of it. A loss would not be the worst, but a point would be really great. Uh, Belgium, Russia. I think Belgium will win that one. Other interesting games on Thursday is, uh, of course, Croatia, Azerbaijan, Netherlands, Belarus. Those, I think, are two games of uh, really good teams that they should win easily. And then, I think, a very dicey duel and, uh, between Slovakia and Hungary. Um, I don't know how recent things are because, you know, the, they are working together on a political level in a way. But honestly, I know that there has always been Slovaks in Hungary, there have always been a minority that have never been seen well, and you know, there's a lot of history between those two nations. So I think this could be a little bit as it's not like Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Hungary. Definitely interesting. Uh, no African games. On Friday, uh, again, Bulgaria, Montenegro at 6 o'clock seems to be an interesting 
match, but I think to stick out England against the Czechs um, should be an England win, but you know, that's uh, definitely not an easy opening uh, opponent for England and Portugal Ukraine I think is all is probably the more interesting uh, matchup here Portugal should win this but Ukraine has proven that they are really 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 good team so uh, that will be another interesting matchup uh, what else do we have we have Moldova uh, against the world champs France um, and then we already have a few games uh, from Africa that um, are interesting. There is Algeria against the Gambia. Algeria is already qualified, but the Gambia needs to get the win to have a chance of qualifying. Uh, and then there's a uh, in that group, which is Group D, there's another game on uh, Sunday that will eventually decide everything. And then uh, in Group I, which is a very open group, uh, Burkina Faso needs to win at home to Mauritania, which I think is already qualified. And at the same time, when Burkina Faso is in the uh, outsider position here, and at the same time, uh, Angola needs to win in Botswana um, to secure their spot. So uh, that is going to be settled right there and then. Um, so that starts the Africa phase. Saturday, um, Almost a little bit of a down day. Um, Sweden Romania to me is the matchup that sticks out, and that's perhaps, perhaps already at six o'clock. And then in the evening, Italy plays Finland and Spain against Norway. Um, I'm in. I'm really interested to see how Finland will actually do uh, after they had this great Nations League campaign. I want to see how they will do in Finland. I think there's more action in um, Africa because Cameroon needs to get a point against the Comoros who um, with a win will overtake Cameroon so there's something happening Gabon needs to win in Burundi to get their spot Burundi is uh, okay with a draw and then Group K we have Zambia which is already eliminated um, playing as Namibia Namibia wins, need, need, needs to win and Guinea Bissau just needs at least a point against Mozambique so it's made uh, two spots for those three uh, Namibia, Guinea-Bissau and uh, Mozambique, so uh, very open. I know that those are not the biggest nations, but you know, uh, you gotta gear up for Africa Cup of Nations. I always like the Africa Cup of Nations, to be honest with you. Okay, then we're on Sunday and there we have the huge game. I mean, Sunday, there's another, there it starts already at 3 o'clock with Wales against Slovakia, which I think is a very interesting game. And then another uh, duel between neighbors from the same group E between Hungary at home to Croatia. Um, I don't think that this is a huge rivalry, but you know, those are the neighbor countries that also are connected via history uh, as they were part of the Hungarian kingdom, as far as I recall uh, the Croatians and uh, at the same time again for me Israel Austria which you know is Israel is the top three team from that group um, so Austria first starts at home to the pot one team and then away to the pot three team and it's not an easy draw I'm really sorry about the sun uh, I should have thought this will get better the longer the days get Honestly, um, it won't be an easy, easy game because the Israeli team will know a lot about the Austrian team. Because not only do they have an Austrian coach, they also have the sporting director uh, that Austria had, I think, since 2005 to 2017. Uh, so, where he oversaw basically the revamping of the whole national team and when they had the last time success. So, um, there's a whole lot of Austrian uh, know-how in the Israeli team, let's put it that way. And that will make this game very, very dicey. Um, yes, Austria probably has more talent in the squad, but I think at least the coach, Andy Herzog, who badly wanted to become the Austrian national team coach now for the second time, um, he, I'm pretty sure, will not want to have 
uh, Val will not want to lose. He, he would like to prove himself uh, that he is actually a valid coach. But then in the evening, I think everything uh, is looking at this is the big clash Netherlands, Germany. Um, it doesn't seem as special anymore because they just played twice against each other. And Netherlands, Germany, I honestly I have a feeling that this might be now Germany's time to get a result in the Netherlands. I mean, the first game in the Netherlands, in the Nations League, where the Netherlands won 3 0, this was a very. Uh, it was a much tight, tighter game with the Germans even having the slight advantage. On all over a play, they just crumbled at the end when they couldn't get much together. And it's a new German team, where we know that it's three players from Bayern that had won the World Cup will not play Müller, Hummers, and Boateng. So, yeah, uh, other game at 8.45 Cyprus, Belgium should be for Belgium. And then in Africa, we have Benin Togo, where Togo needs to get the win. Uh, we have Libya against South Africa, um, where Libya, I think, needs to get the win to overtake South Africa. Then Group G is like for uh, the Congo needs to win in Zimbabwe, and uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo needs to win against Liberia. Uh, Zimbabwe and Liberia have the advantage over the two Congos, so um, that's uh, so that's why this is must-win games for them. I think uh, if both end, end in a draw, uh, things could get dicey. I don't have now the points here. And a similar uh, situation in Group L, where Uganda, of all teams, is already qualified. Uh, which I think is cool that we see uh, different teams every time. But now uh, we have Cape Verde against Lesotho. Uh, where Cape Verde needs to actually win, Lesotho will be happy with a draw and Tanzania should win at home to um, Uganda which since Uganda is qualified could be easier but you never really know. And that concludes basically the African qualifier so this is really on three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and uh, we'll know qualified um, which I'm actually I, I will check those results occasionally. For the European qualifiers, we have two more uh, match days, namely France against Iceland. Any memories from that? Well, of course, we had it at Euro 2016, a quarterfinal. Uh, so France playing at home to Iceland. They actually had a friendly not too long ago. Uh, same mat matchup, I think it was played in a Ren, uh, was it 2 2? Iceland had a 2 0 lead. Montenegro, England, I think it's also interesting, but the big game for sure is Portugal, Serbia. Uh, Portugal also, pretty tough, rough start to uh, their qualification um, campaign, but it's two home games at least. Um, Portugal, Ukraine, Portugal, Serbia, but you right off the bat play the two big teams. So, yeah, quite interesting. And on Tuesday, Bosnia against Greece, I think, also 855, is really interesting. Italy Liechtenstein will be, should be a blowout, although in a true Italian fashion it might just end 1 0. Malta, Spain, that will be the true blowout, I think. Um, and then two, I would say, two interesting matches of, um, you know, this from the second group of European. Uh, soccer, so not the absolute big, big names, but the whole next. Norway against Sweden. Neighbors, of course, Sweden should win this one easily, but you know, Norway can be pesky at home. And then I think the big one, Sweden, a uh, big one, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Switzerland against Denmark, um, I think will also be an inter could also be an interesting match matchup. I would actually favor the Swiss this time around. Uh, simply for the fact that they are actually playing in the Nations League final, final Four and they have a pretty darn good team. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's not Switzerland that wins against Denmark. And Denmark, although it's also good. And then there's another friendly game on Tuesday that could be of interest, which is the Czech Republic against Brazil. Uh, just throwing out there, I think also during this weekend we have Argentina play Venezuela. I think Brazil is even playing Panama or some some opponent like that. So those are the games to watch for. Um, if 
from my perspective, I had only one game to choose each day. Um, Thursday, it would be hard between Austria and Poland and Belgium and Russia. Being from Austria, I think I would uh, choose Austria, Poland, but as a neutral observer, Belgium, Russia. Uh, Friday, Portugal, Ukraine, I think screams out, although England, England against the Czechs also is interesting. But I think Portugal, uh, Ukraine will be the better matchup. Um, on Saturday, Sweden, Romania, it's an early kickoff, but that's the one that really looks uh, to be the closest. Uh, rematch of the 94 quarterfinal. Doesn't really count as a rematch, to be honest. Um, Sunday, Netherlands, Germany. I think that's the only game. If there's only one game you want to watch, that's the one game I would recommend you watch. Uh, on Monday, Portugal, Serbia. And on Tuesday, I think it's Switzerland, Denmark. Let me know what you watch. These are my recommendations. Um, I'm curious about all of these. I gave you slightly how I think um, those matches might go. And yeah, I will probably do a roundup of the African uh, qualification a little bit as well, because it's surely interesting. Uh, and I think Monday evening there might be a good chance that I'll, I'll get to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of what to watch for in the European qualifiers and beyond in the international break. There are more games out there, but most of them are friendlies and I don't really pay much attention to friendlies. Uh, I gave you one checks against Brazil, which seems to be almost the most interesting. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day